welcome everybody to Bankers Trust Uptown. By the way, my name is Gene Shanks. If I can be uh, slightly serious for a second, we have a philosophy, a strategic philosophy paper at Bankers Trust where we talk about all the things that the bank stands for. And one of the statements says that recruiting is our most important business. And it comes even before customer service. So in keeping with that philosophy, Jay Pomerantz, the head of our foreign exchange trading, who's luckily sitting at my table, has decided to leave the market tonight and to come up early for this party. Now, he lost a million dollars by being here. Wait, so am I getting fired? <laughs> Actually, we are very serious about people and are very proud of our people, the type of people we have, the excellence of the quality of their work, but most of all, the fact that everybody seems to have fun working together. And I think that uh, as you go forward, thinking about a permanent job in the succeeding year, that uh, I think you should give a lot of thought to the notion that uh, who you work with is really one of the most important things that, uh, that you can use in your decision uh, to come up with hopefully the right decision. You may have another minute. I'll uh, present Chicago City Limits. Thank you. Droplet. So please put your hands together, give a warm welcome to Dr. Jean Malfunction, huh? Thank you very much. During this part of the show, the only thing you have to do is shout out a subject, any subject, and Dr. Malfunction will tell you a little known or previously unknown fact about this subject. Risk arbitrage. Risk arbitrage is a Strange disease. <laughs> All right, uh, next question. Insider trading. Insider trading. Uh, when, Dennis? Is. These guys are pretty quick here at the comedy club. Almost as quick as we are when we're in the middle of a trade. Swissy 6575. Swiss 6070. Let's try the downside. Give me some Mark Paul, please. Mark Paul, lots of calls. City London. What's going on out there most of the time is incredibly quick responses to stimuli which are changing over and over. We sell about uh, $30 million. You bang out 30. Sold a lot of calls. Yeah. My name is Jay Pomerens. I've been at Bankers Trust 13 years. I am currently a managing director and in charge of a few different businesses spot foreign exchange trading, currency arbitrage, the cross-market financial engineering, and the non-dollar bonds. For 20, what, is he doing this on the other side, or what's, do you know anything yet? 80, 90 marks. 80, 80, 80, trading. 90% of what goes on out there is the human emotion at work. It's not a long, lengthy analysis of the economic factors. It's good, but, I mean, there's a lot of liquidity. We put in $50 million, that's nothing. That is there, and that does go into the decision many points along the way. Okay, we go the other way? Let's give it a shot. the other way on 60. Biggest wave for 60. Everyone. The actual trading is driven by very human feelings, fear and greed. Done. Take them. And if we're making a lot of money and are in the right idea from a risk standpoint, we go with what's happening then. If we're losing a lot, then we hopefully lock those people up for the balance of the week. What were we, what were we up to? Excuse me? What were we up to? Just, we're just discussing yes. the philosophies. Very like if in the trading, if you, feel, if you feel anxious about a position, then you have to assume you, as a human being, are, are indicative of the market. Mm -hmm. The market's going to feel anxious the same way. Yeah. If you just sit there and wait, you're going to be like everybody else, make a price. I have a 42 bid for WI 10 and outs. 60, 70. I think when we talk about what motivates people in the job, and once you get past money and security, and by the way, in the trading area, we get uh, free lunches and pencils, and that's one of the big perks here. But once we get past those things, one has to feel great about themselves and doing what they're doing to be in this business. Well, I knew you were in a good mood for some reason today. Now, I say this business because it puts a lot of demand on one in terms of stress. 
It is not a nine to five job. You're basically on call because the markets are on call 24 hours a day. Okay, how about a little baseball practice? That 2 a.m. phone call where you've just found out that you've lost a million and a half or two million dollars, or you're up four million dollars, which does come in the middle of the night, and I'm not being facetious. All right, let's get, uh, choke up a little bit. Left foot forward. Now let's see a shake. All right. So on the good days, you go home and you're just like, you're flying. I mean, you know, okay, you've loaded. had a great day in the market the or with somebody in particular. You come home and you're nice to everybody and they love you and life is terrific. The tough days, uh, the days when you're down a lot of money, we have a special cell in the house with some padding oh. in it and a, uh, it only locks from the outside. Commerce, Marx. Okay. I think to talk about what makes us successful or gives us the edge to recognize things starts from the top in terms of management. And I hope uh, Charlie Sanford's listening to this when my next raise comes up. Debbie Harmon. I'm an associate in the Real Estate Finance Group. I've been with Bankers Trust for five years. Basically what I do is I'm a relationship manager for about 10 accounts and it's my job to bring all the services and the products that are available around the bank to my customers. One of my customers was a syndicator and now is diversifying. And he came to us last August, and he said, I have a, an opportunity to buy an existing building in Midtown Manhattan and renovate it, and Bankers Trust, we'd like you to be our partner in an equity deal. And in 1985, the state laws changed, the banking laws, and we are able to invest in real estate. So after eight long months, we closed our first equity investment in the Midtown Office Building. And there was a philosophy that I always, that my managers used to say was there, and I really felt was that we'll give you a rope and you go out as far as you want, as long as you know when to call for help. We'll either pull you in, hopefully, before you've taken one step too far, or there'll always be a net underneath. in terms of square footage? Yeah, it's about 21,000. Oh, no, no, that's fine. It's different from a commercial bank, this is what I mean, which that I would not expect. give you the rope. Remember how we did those numbers to see what income loss? And it's different from an investment bank, which would require that you number crunch for a certain period of time. In-house appraisal of 144? No, 140. 140. And I develop so much faster than any of my peers at any investment banks or commercial Bradley? banks. I think there's something we should consider that's even, even more different than that. And that is that maybe we shouldn't be doing this scope of a renovation at all that the difference in dollar rents that we're going to get. The reason why Bankers Trust can attract the quality of people they do is because of the environment. The caliber and the quality of the individuals that I work with are outstanding. And everybody tries to help everybody else. It's not cutthroat. It's like running your own business. It's like running your own portfolio of accounts. I came to the bank with a BA in political science. I always knew that I wanted to go back to business school. And the bank was perceptive enough to offer me a executive MBA program opportunity, which is the Wharton Executive MBA. It's fantastic. It's hard. It's very time consuming. You don't sleep very much. You learn to really become very efficient with your time. That's at a 13% you know, debt service Merchant property. banker in concept is using the balance sheet capabilities of a commercial bank, which is 
definitely nice to have in your back pocket when you go out to customers with the intermediary skills and the creativity and the corporate finance skills of an investment bank. So merchant banking, I guess, for me is the ability to be Debbie Harmon as opposed to being a corporate clone. I know, Don, if you want to be a banker, you have to be a banker. You've got so many suits. So many suits. <laughs> yeah, but they're all black. Look at you. Come on. How do you expect to get a job with wimp arms like that? Oh, come on, Denise. A banker needs to have arms. Denise, I don't want to be a banker. Pounding all that. Money. I don't want to be a banker. Moving security. I don't want to be a banker. I want to be a... It's the same thing. I like to start each day not knowing exactly what's going to happen. It's very interesting to ride to work in the morning knowing that no matter what I've planned for the day, it'll be something different. My name's David Doherty. I've been at the bank for six years. I guess I was a risk taker because I left a rather significant position at a major investment bank where my future was much more clearly demarked to take a position where I could be my own boss. That was my general motivation for coming to Bankers Trust. And I suspect it's the same motivation many people still have today. See what he thinks, and you're going to be interviewing him on Wednesday. Okay. When I was asked to come and run a public finance effort, I was barely 30 years old. And I thought at that point I had relatively little downside in taking the challenge. Other assignment. Well, let's see. In February of 1985, I was asked to rebuild our merger and acquisition business at Bankers Trust Company. I've been in that position ever since. In six years, yes, we've come a long way and being recognized for our skill in the investment yeah, banking arena. Well, like, right, Dave, to hear your input on why we might want to hire this guy. Well, as you know, Dave, we've been trying to uh, formulate a policy to how to approach M&A in Tokyo, and this person looks like a perfect fit. Um, we're certainly within the top 10 in many business lines, but our goal really is to be one of the top one, two, or three in every business line we compete in, and that's true of mergers and acquisitions as well. We've been reviewing our Far East strategy, and we had put a model I think about five days later that Steve said, I found the guy, and I could hardly believe it. We're trying to position for change. We're anticipating uh, our continued uh, emergence in all the areas of the securities business, be it equities or corporate debt or otherwise, when Congress and its wisdom or the Fed determines that we can uh, be in those businesses. All right. Nice. How you doing? How you doing, guy? Good to see you. A traditional uh, bank tends not uh, to take risk. Let's catch up on two things. One, the deal status sheet for the energy group. What we've had to do here at Bankers Trust Company is blend a culture of lack of risk in a typical lending business, which has by and large left this institution, into a very aggressive risk-taking environment. The real issue is whether Chevron will bid for the rest at this point. Right. I think on all levels this institution has proven to be one which engenders risk-takers coming here and joining. Is that, that's uh, signed, right? All right, guys, just remember on Thursday, kill them with kindness, please. Okay. All right. And if you look at our track day. record for hiring young MBAs or law students or other professional students, you'll find that it's usually the entrepreneurial one that's coming to work at Bankers Trust Company. My personal relaxation typically comes from sports. I like to ski, I like to play golf sure that my golf partners would be very upset if I didn't play golf with them because then they'd have less money. I'm fortunate enough to have the bank provide an opportunity to work out on a daily basis when I can get there at the Cardio Fitness Center. That's very helpful. If you were able to get rid of everything in one fell swoop, you'd be able to make a meaningful acquisition. The thing I enjoy most about Bankers Trust Company is the feeling of partnership I have with my colleagues, particularly in the M&A arena. There's no place where that's more true, where a client can get an idea in their mind that they'd like to execute that had never even come up before in two months of conversation and call and say, I'm interested in buying X company, or I want to sell this business. What are your ideas? 
our sense of the market is that we should be able to get seven times operating profit. And if the market's really hot, we might get as high as nine. So that gives you a range of something. One needs to be rather broad-based to react to those questions on a continuous basis. 20, 30 million dollar units. Now, what I think we have here is the makings of an institution where people do want to work together, do want to respect one another's professionalism, and are drawing on one another to make the sum of the parts a little bit more than the whole. And that, um, that for me, has been a tremendous experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it was. It did come to me in a dream the night before last. And yes, the only thing I did dream about was the evil glass steagle. Yes. <laughs> From yonder kingdom, I did have these visions. Oh, Louis, Louis, I do come hither and listen to me, Lord Vastco, I call your name. My lady, I have heard you. I escaped the stocks and slipped my bonds. <laughs> my lord, you'll take my hand. I have most dread fear. Oh, he did come to me in a dream. My name is Averill Wilson. I've been with the bank for almost nine years now. I'm a vice president in the Fiduciary and Security Services Department, which we call FASTCO. Uh, much easier to remember that way. There's a lot of business. Uh, evidently, there's a lot of new business out there yes, uh, with that customer. Do we have any sense as to what the additional income could be? FASCO, in turn, is part of ProfitCo, which is an overall function in the bank. ProfitCo stands for the Processing Financial Services Investment and Trust Company. I mean, you got to love a name like, like ProfitCo. We have investment and we have we some safekeeping, safekeeping but uh, uh, that's, and that's for anything. And now I'm managing an area within that world, which I think is very exciting. It's a total change for me. The, the bank has never left me in an area long enough to become bored and sedentary. What I'm doing now really is managing a group of salespeople or business development people, and that's fun for me. Okay, well, it sounds as if we're at least working towards some kind of a, a near-term goal here. And I think I'm a salesperson at heart, and I'd love to see new business come in. We just gained a, a huge uh, million and a half dollar securities lending relationship with one of our customers, and that to me is very exciting. That's a lot of money. Um, and to have the sense that, that you have contributed to that or that somebody on your team has contributed to that, um, that is very, uh, that makes me very happy. I enjoy that. Um, that's what I really, that's what I really like best about what I do. I enjoy the mixture of a career and a fairly hard driving career with family. I have a one and a half year old daughter who is wonderful and I'm very glad to have my career, to be focusing my life in more than one direction. When I walk in the door at seven in the evening and this little face looks up at me, I find that very refreshing. And no matter what happened at work, it all sort of drifts away. I was not raised in New York, and I have thought long and hard, as has my husband, about raising our daughter in New York. I think a child growing up in New York is exposed to more, both good and bad, uh, at an earlier age. But that, in my mind, is good. It's the way in which that exposure is handled by the family that really counts. It's, to me, a challenge in a sense trying to fit everything in. But I think that's all just part of the big picture and it's just what I've wanted to do. Bankers Trust really isn't for everybody. It requires somebody who really doesn't mind uh, the uncertainty of the future, who really doesn't mind change and who's willing to be flexible, uh, roll a little with the punches, uh, who has enough creativity on his or her own uh, to contribute to those changes and be part of that future. Lord Fastco, can't you do anything for me? Yes, I can, my lady. Breathe! There is one thing Fastco can do. What can he do? Love. Loan? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes, even Lord Stiegel. I know exactly how you can be defeated. Huh. If I could only get you a loan. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. 
Merchant banking is really predicated on good people. And what we are trying to do is find people who are motivated and who have this balance in terms of their personal and professional lives and the skills that they need and we need to succeed. Uh, my name is Kevin McGilloway. I'm a senior vice president at Bankers Trust. I've been here five years and ten days, and I work in the financial services area. Many people laughingly call us corporate samurai because we have a very high standard of excellence which we apply to ourselves, and it's a very, very personal thing. To me, it doesn't have to be karate. It could be a mergers and acquisitions deal. It could be a foreign exchange trade. But the idea of challenging yourself and working with good people who will help you succeed is really the essence of what life's all about. And karate and bankers trust seem like a natural thing to do. Technology today is an integral and essential part of the financial services business. We are looking for people who now view technology not as an end unto itself, but as a part or a tool of a business solution. Excuse me, I'm talking to someone important. This office, <laughs> you making money or not? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I have a master's degree in computer science and an MBA in finance. We want to be able at any one time to know what we have outstanding with any customer. The bank simply said to me, come in and do your thing. Here are a group of users that we want you to work with. Go out, meet them, and figure out what has to be done, and then go do it. Make things happen. No excuses are accepted. <laughs> well, the two issues are obviously the technology itself to connect everybody. Right. And then the data administration side. Right. My responsibilities are um, for the technology support of the front office professionals in financial services. And what I try to do is to get the right information to the right people at the right time. It's easier said than done because we're in a 24-hour market, instantaneous decision-making on a $20 billion a day trading volume, and we have offices in 22 different locations around the world. In general, technology has three values, one of which is as a globalizer. We use that phrase to mean that we are trying to keep the entire Bankers Trust community tied together information being shared and people being able to get that information and discuss it with each other anytime, anywhere, 24 hours a day. The second dimension of technology is of revenue enhancement. And by that we mean getting the information to the people so that they can make their decisions. As part of that information, we supply a wide variety of analytics, bond calculators, arbitrage models, option pricing models, and the third dimension of technology is the cost control. We eliminate paper and have reduced uh, the unit cost of a trade or a transaction, in some cases, by two-thirds. Which is the easiest way to do it again? Is it well, we have two London, locations. New York, or London to Hong Kong? When you trade $20 billion a day on a global basis, that can amount to significant cost savings. Okay, let's see. Is this confirm anything? Yes, transmission completed. I was sitting in the cafeteria with two of my friends, lamenting about getting old and never having pursued one of my childhood dreams, which was to study karate. It seemed like the natural thing at Bankers Trust to say, no more excuses, let's start a karate club. I think in terms of being uh, challenged to pursue individual excellence, to really stretching ourselves to our maximum, and to doing this in an uh, environment with a team supporting you, I think is very consistent with the Bankers Trust spirit. We are something new. We invented merchant banking. We have not yet figured out what it is. And as such, it's a very exciting place. Tomorrow, it may take us down a road that we hadn't anticipated. I think commercial banking and investment banking have long and very wonderful histories, but they're very well understood. And in that sense, and, and in some sense, they're almost limiting. Merchant banking is new, and it's us. And we're making things happen our way, and we don't know what the answer is going to be tomorrow. But if you like that type of environment, which I do, it's very exciting.